So today I'm going to give you a comparison slash review of Saxon math and teaching textbooks. So for 2019 through 2022, we were using teaching textbooks seven and for my, at the time, sixth grader. So he was going through teaching textbooks. I know a lot of people like teaching textbooks and I'm just gonna be honest, for my family, it was a total fail. I mean, major. Like not a little bit, not, oh, well, we could have adjusted things. No, it just, it was bad from beginning to end. It was awful. I would say the first two weeks we were like, oh, it's working. And I should have taken my own advice and just like switched curriculums halfway through the year, but I didn't because I was like, I'm gonna see this through. Not a good idea. <laughs> I'm gonna get into like, you know, what we're doing now and give you guys both the review of teaching textbooks and Saxon, but I'm just gonna go through right now all the things we hated about teaching textbooks and why I didn't think it worked. Okay, the very first thing, my son literally went down an entire grade. It's like the year that we did teaching textbooks, he basically learned nothing. And this was really disappointing to me because I strive to have them excel in their academics and he was at the time quite a bit ahead. So it worked out like now he's an average, but it was really disappointing to have put so much time and effort into getting him ahead to have it come to a screeching halt and have it feel like we wasted an entire year. I actually had to hire a tutor to teach him with teaching textbooks. That's how bad it was. She would meet him on Zoom. This was before COVID. This was way before we were worrying about Zoom for COVID. It was just, she would meet him on Zoom and they would work through the lesson. She would watch the lesson with him and then help him actually learn the lesson by using a whiteboard. So that brings me to my point, which of saying like some kids maybe are visual learners like that. And it really depends on your child, but my child is not a visual learner. He needs to actually write it out. He cannot just watch a screen, you know, and have it tell him something and then understand it. It's not how he learns. So great learning experience for me. I didn't know that it was his first time doing teaching textbooks. And uh, turns out he doesn't learn like that at all. Not only did I pay for teaching textbooks, I also paid for a tutor for him. So that was rough. It was super frustrating to feel like I thought I was buying this all inclusive course and still having to pay someone else to actually help him understand it because he's not getting it. So my other issue with the teaching textbooks thing is that I think a lot of parents substitute it for actually having to like pay attention to their kid's school. Now this may not be you. Um, I know that when I got teaching textbooks, I was working and I was homeschooling three other children and I thought, oh, this will be a really great way for him to be able to do his math and I don't really have to be involved. Teaching textbooks does give your child a lesson and they, you know, walk you through the lesson uh, visually and then you have your practice and you have your answers. But I don't think that a computer is ever a substitute for actually like a parent's eyes. I don't think having a computer is ever a substitute for parental supervision and guidance when it comes to anything, but if you want your child to learn, you actually have to be involved and make sure they're learning, right? So sure, if your kid is getting it, if they're totally grasping the concept and doing well with teaching textbooks, like stick with it. I'm all for it. If they're, if your child is learning and you're actually watching it and making sure they're learning, I just, I don't want anyone watching this video to think that you can just do teaching textbooks and like your job is done. Cause it's not, you still should be every single day checking how they're doing on their test, checking that they fully understood it. All the things that you would normally do with hands-on math. So this year, because the teaching textbook last year was a total fail, um, we have switched to a Saxon math. It's kind of funny because I really love Sunlight and I love all of their programs, but I had decided because I wanted something online and I wanted something a little more like hands off 
to do teaching textbooks. We, I started doing some research and like having my son, I had him take some placement tests on Sunlight's website to find out a math that would be maybe better suited to him because we were coming from Singapore math, which only goes through sixth grade. So we couldn't go back to Singapore, which by the way, Singapore was amazing. I love Singapore math. I think they do an incredible job. My son's scores when he was doing Singapore math were significantly higher, crazy higher than when he was doing text, teaching textbooks. Teaching textbooks, I don't think clearly taught certain math concepts. So now we're on to Saxon math. Okay, here's my thoughts on Saxon math thus far. You can read the whole lesson. Let's open up and show you guys. Okay, so he has his lesson, part one, and he's got, it's just a very well, like, um, explanation. There's examples given, and one of the things I love that Saxon does is they give, they give, they have him write his answers in a completed form. So he actually has to think about it and write it all out, and in teaching textbooks, there, it just didn't feel like they made him work as hard. That, that sounds bad. But they didn't make him write it all out very much. And because um, he was doing teaching textbooks 3.0, which is all online, he had no workbook. They're showing lesson 51, rounding numbers. So he has a warm up, new concept. Then he has mixed practice. So he has practice. This is what I'll go through and check his answers on. So right now, he's seventh grade, he can, um, he has a very high reading comprehension. He reads his lesson and he answers it and he doesn't need any help from me. And if he does, I'll teach him the lesson. This is his that he does on his own and he doesn't need my help for, and he's going quickly because now that he's back in his groove of like quality math that he can fully understand, we've got the solutions manual. And I'll just show you guys. So you have, the answers to the practices, and then you've got the, the warm up, and then the answers to the lessons practice. So that's that, and I really like it. It's really simple, really easy. I just go through it, check his work. And then we've got all these extra, um, just worksheets that I can print out and copy. I remember, <laughs> funny, because I did these as a kid. So, uh, so I remember doing these and being like, oh. Yeah, anyway, it was kind of a fun game. I loved it when my mom would print these off for me, because I just enjoyed it, because I was a dwarf, I guess. Um, until it got harder and then I didn't enjoy it so much. We also got this DVD with the, um, with instructions and he at this point doesn't need to watch it. Like we haven't turned it on, um, especially because I already know that's not his learning style. It's not working for him. So why would I do it unless he needed it or maybe I needed it? <laughs> I don't know. Again, I do better from reading too. So I'm thinking that he and I just both read the lesson and one of us will get it and we can move on from there. The difference with teaching textbooks is that it's all online and I will um, kind of give you guys a little demonstration. They've got the lesson, they've got the lecture, and then they have some practice questions and then they have the actual um, lesson. And I think some kids maybe enjoy it and it's like, um, I, I mean obviously a lot of kids enjoy it, right? Because like lots of people do teaching textbooks and it's totally fine. Um, but I think it just really depends on your child and you should do what works for them. And I'm just gonna say like, please, 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 if something's not working, like just switch then. It's okay to switch in the middle of the year. It's totally okay, especially if that's gonna make it like less difficult, less stressful, more fun. And I personally like want my children to be happy and to enjoy their school. And when something's like a really big struggle, it's hard. And it's like, when that happens, like I try to kind of change what we're doing and I'm sad to say, sometimes I just, I think maybe we need to just work through it, but I wish I would have switched so much earlier. I wish I would have switched away from teaching textbooks like weeks into it. I should have just seen it wasn't working and like called it right then instead of trying to like limp our way through the school year with this big frustrating thing that he hated to do. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video helped you, kind of gave you some ideas on what teaching textbooks is like, what Saxon math is like, and why I prefer Saxon math. If you love teaching textbooks or you love Saxon math, comment below and let me know like 
what you love about it or why you like it so much. I know there's lots of parents who love teaching textbooks and I think there's lots of parents who love sex and math. So it's okay if you like one or the other better. Um, I just know for my oldest son, he's not a teaching textbooks math fan. Um, and we're going to definitely stick with sex and math for him. And then we'll see what I end up doing with the younger ones as they move out of Singapore math. I've got a few more years, so I'm just going to stick with Singapore until that's not available any longer. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.